So, the only thing you know that you can be sure of, that the next crisis is coming, and it will be twice as much as this one. And for that one, there won't be enough money anymore. So that will be it. And that is the consequence of systematic human stupidity. Now, why the hell are they so afraid to change when they know, you know that this is an absolute collision? And instead of breaking, I mean, they accelerate. You know. I don't have a recipe against that, but I'm, I'm, very, I'm very afraid, you know, that what is still coming. Well, to begin with, a completely new concept of economics. This economy is crazy and poisonous. I am an economist. And I've been fighting against the economy that is taught the way it is being taught and being practiced. I have been fighting against it for almost 40 years of my life. Because it's an absurd economy that has nothing to do with, the real, with real life. It's all fabrications. No? If the model doesn't work, it's not because the model is wrong, but because reality plays foul tricks. And reality is there to be domesticated, you know, and, and become the model. That is the, that, that is the attitude, and that's systematic. In addition, what is the economy that is being taught in the universities today, everywhere? Neoclassical economics. Neoliberalism is an offspring of neoclassical economics. And neoclassical economics is 19th century. So we are supposed to solve problems of the 21st century that have no precedent with theories of the 19th century. We no longer have a physics of the 19th century, nor a biology, nor an engineering, no nothing. The only thing in which we stopped in the 19th century is in the concept of economics. I mean, and that is elementally absurd. And the, the main journals and everything, you know, I mean, no, no, that's the way it must be. For me, the problem begins in the university. The university is, for me, the main responsible for this. The university today has become an accomplice you know, of maintaining a world which we don't want. You know? Because if, if, if you don't teach something different to the economists, well, how the hell are you going to change it when there are professionals, you know, working? It's impossible. When I studied economics you know, in the early 50s, it was totally different. We had some fundamental courses like economic history, history of economic thought, those courses don't exist in the curricula anymore. You don't have to know the history. It's not necessary. It's not necessary that you know what previous economists ever thought. That's not necessary. You don't need it. I mean, that's even stupid arrogance, you know. No, now we know for sure this is it forever. Hmm? No? Then it ceases to be a discipline, it ceases to be a science, and it becomes a religion. And that is what economics, neoliberal economics, is, is today. So, first of all, we need cultured economists again, who know the history, where they come from, how the ideas originated, who did, that, uh, did what, and so on and so on. Second, an economics now that understands itself very clearly as a subsystem of a larger system that is finite, the biosphere. Uh, hence, economic growth is an impossibility. And third, a system that understands that it cannot function without the services of ecosystems. And economists know nothing about ecosystems. They don't know nothing about uh, thermodynamics, you know, nothing about uh, 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 <clears throat> biodiversity or anything. I mean, they are totally ignorant in that respect. No? And I don't see what harm it would do, you know, to an economist to know that if the bees would disappear, he would disappear as well, mm? because there wouldn't be food anymore. But he doesn't know that, no? that we depend absolutely from nature. But for the, these economists we have, nature is a subsystem of the economy. I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy. No? And then, in addition, you know, bring consumption closer to production. Um, I live in the south of Chile, in the deep south. And that area is a, a, a fantastic area, you know, in milk products and what have you. you know. Top. Technologically, like the maximum. You know. um, 
I was a few months ago in, in, in a hotel there in the south for breakfast, and there are these little butter things, you know, I get one, and butter from New Zealand. I mean, if that isn't crazy, you know. And why? why? Because economists don't know how to calculate really costs, you know. To bring butter from 20,000 kilometers to a place where you make the best butter, you know, under the argument that it was cheaper, is a colossal stupidity because they don't take into consideration what's it, what is the impact of 20,000 kilometers of transport, what is the impact on the environment of that transportation, you know, and all the things. And in addition, I mean, it's cheaper because it's subsidized. So it's clearly cases in which the prices never tell the truth. It's all tricks, you know, and those tricks do colossal harms.